Where do you stand on the way that, um, you know, institutions deal with people? Yeah. I mean, have you been sectioned? For yeah, example? I've been sectioned. What is that experience yeah. like? To me, it was no different from any other hospital admission because when you're not sectioned, um, you're given treatment, and if you refuse the treatment, they find ways of making you take it anyway. So there's not really a difference between sectioned and not being sectioned. When I've been in hospital, I've gone in voluntarily and then decided overnight oh, do you know, it was a bad idea, this is the worst place I should be. They didn't let me out because then they, you're in their system and they need you to be in there for three days for them to assess you before they decide what you're going to do. Now, if I came in freely and I'm not sectioned, I should be allowed to go freely. It actually creates a sort of a fear because it's like, fuck, I'm in this fucking weird system where I've got no choice, really. This is fucking weird. So it sets up this, I don't trust you guys. You know, which is supposedly a symptom, but it's fucking true because why would you trust them? They're not letting you out. So, but the, but the sectioning, the sectioning happened. Um, there was a bit of um, it's quite controversial. The sectioning happened because the lead up to it, I was on a camp on Dartmoor. I was on a Qigong camp on Dartmoor, and that's what triggered it. I had too much new chi, and my body just poof, exploded me. Okay, I'm like really like. Not, I, what do you mean by new chi? Okay, so you can do qigong exercises which gathers more chi into your body. So what that does is it magnifies all the blocked chi in your body. It makes it bigger. But do you mean energy? What yeah. do you mean by energy. chi? Energy, yeah, I mean energy. Energy that's flowing through you. Yeah, that's naturally flowing through and we, you know, we can block the flow of chi in our system. Most, you know, most of us are doing that all the time. So, so if I'm feeling good and I'm, and I'm on top of things, my chi's flowing. If I'm stressed and I'm getting yeah, yeah. in a kafuddle about... Yeah, yeah, you're not allowing... You would yeah. say that the chi is blocked. You're creating resistance to the natural flow of chi. Naturally, energy just wants to expand and flow through you and for you to feel amazing. That's totally natural. So anything outside of that, you're blocking the chi. So if you go to a, a Qigong 10-day camp already with chi blocked in the system somewhere and gather loads and loads of new chi in there, that block stuff is going to magnify, it's going to kind of... Poof. You know, they realised this isn't something that they can hold on the camp. You know, they had, they had the whole camp to deal with, so they took me to the GP. It was on Dartmoor and I was based in Bristol at the time, so they took me in an ambulance all the way to a hospital in Bristol. So because I'm going in already a state where I can't fully communicate for myself. I'm in other realms and stuff like that and not socialising very well. Because I can't really make decisions for myself at that point, um, someone else is having to make them for me. So that's kind of one of the prerequisites for sectioning, is that I'm being admitted, but I'm not going, you know, I'm not going with a family member who's agreed and we've all agreed. I'm being admitted by this camp down on Dartmoor with their staff. So but I did say to, to one of the staff, I think, on my way in was, oh, great, it's great that I'm here. You know, it's better that I'm here. Uh, so she got, she got a sense that I felt it was the right thing for me to do to be in this hospital. You know, rather than on the camp, there wasn't, there wasn't room for what I was experiencing on the camp. So I was happy to be in the hospital, in which case she fought my corner for, we don't need to section this woman because I heard her say she's all right to be here. So bless her, she's obviously had some kind of social conscience and thought we shouldn't have this on her record, you know, a sectioning is quite a horrible thing to have a new record. So she was kind of fighting my corner for one that I couldn't fight for myself or didn't even care to fight, actually. I couldn't give a shit at the time whether I'm sectioned or not. It's all, it doesn't matter to me. But the decision was made to section me because in the time that they were assessing me, they were having to pay a bank nurse to be with me in my room 24-7. And that was costing a lot of money to the NHS. So if I was sectioned, I was in a locked-off wing and they wouldn't have to pay somebody to be with me 24-7. So my sectioning was a financial decision. Um, and that's quite controversial, I think. Um, so the experience of being sectioning to me is all the fucking same. 
I don't, you know, put me in, you put me in hospital, you put me in hospital, it's not very nice on a psychiatric ward. Um, it doesn't matter whether I'm sectioned or not because when I try to use my free will when I'm not sectioned not to take their treatment, it's not allowed anyway that, you know, you're deemed a kind of nuisance and they find ways of putting it in you which are unpleasant. I'd much rather just comply, put a pill under my tongue than be forced down onto my bed and be injected violently. You know, it's like I make the choice just to comply once I'm in there. And because that's all sectioning means is you don't have the right to refuse treatment. That's the only difference. And they, they, you've experienced, you've been forced, they have forced you to take drugs. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. So I, I didn't want to take the, the, the pills. So, um, yeah, they injected me, you know, they held me down, they injected me. They find ways of getting it into my body. Bless them, you know, they're doing what they think is right. They're not, it's not like they're evil, they're doing the wrong thing, you know. Mm. I know that they're doing what they believe is right. Um, and there was this particular nurse that come in every day on his bicycle, and he was a really nice guy, he was a really hard worker, really nice guy. I got a really good vibe off him. And he came into my room one day, and, um, you know, using the kind of the trust that I have in him, he just went open wide in a really kind of fun way, like we're playing a game or something. So I just opened my mouth, and he just squirts the medication into my mouth, which was actually quite unpleasant because it felt like... You've, been You've just been, yeah, you just tricked me. You were being really nice and now this tastes disgusting and I feel like you're punishing me. So then that, that sets off another lack of trust and another sort of paranoia and, you know, it's like it's not very nice. 